film and video production really have some surprising methods for making things look cinematic. Here are five ways to turn your videos into movies and the first one is smoke. I discovered this technique a little while ago. I saw a video that contained beautiful visible light beams. It had this soft but dramatic look. It had this dreamlike quality to the footage. It basically just looked like a movie or commercial and I wanted that too. So the first thing I thought of was mist filters. I have a mist filter, it creates halation, but it doesn't make the light beams visible. After a bit of googling I found out that the light beams, they only start to appear if there's smoke, fog or haze. And it's actually very common for commercial or movie productions to have smoke on set. I then learned that they aren't setting their gear on fire outside of the frame to create smoke. They use smoke machines. I first thought that this wouldn't really be an option for me because it would be complicated and expensive, but the machine I ended up buying was actually, it was actually quite cheap. My machine only cost 39 euros and it was seven and a half euros for the fluid. I would, I would recommend getting the heaviest or thickest type of smoke fluid though, because the smoke fluid my machine originally came with, it dissipated within 10 minutes, which made it impossible for me to establish some continuity between shots. This technique is really fun and it can really make your videos look like movies. Um, it is not always smoke that's used in movies though, it can be haze or fog too. Uh, smoke, haze and fog, they all have different qualities. So if you want to learn more about the differences between haze, fog and smoke, watch more YouTube. Also do research on this stuff before buying it because even though I'm still alive, I cannot imagine that recording in this smoke all day is good for your health. Um, and another important thing, be sure to turn off any fire alarms. I learned this practically. The second way for turning your videos into movies is by using diopters. And the correct term for this is actually macro filters. I first noticed this look in a YouTube video. I thought it was created by using a macro lens, so I figured I had to get a whole new macro lens for this, but that wasn't the case. I left a comment asking about how this look was achieved and got a response. Apparently the key to creating these shots is a macro filter or diopter. A diopter is a close up lens filter that basically functions as a magnifying glass on top of your regular camera lens. Adding diopter filters to your lens allows you to focus on objects closer than the minimum focus distance of your lens. It allows you to create extreme close up shots which can look really cool and cinematic and makes your video more interesting especially if the other shots in your edit are all wide shots. These diopter filters do introduce a lot of distortion and chromatic aberration. Um, if you take a look at the edges of my frame, uh, you can see that there's a lot of weird color outlines at the edges of objects. Even though this occurs because of a lens failure, I really love the look of this. To me, it really feels vintage. And when I first saw this, I, I wanted those chromatic aberrations just as much as the magnifying capabilities. I just think it looks really cool and cinematic. These filters are also quite cheap. I bought a whole kit for 65 euros, but if you don't want to spend much, just get a single plus eight or plus 10 diopter. That will also do the trick of magnifying and distorting your image, and it should only be around 30 euros or less. The third way for turning your videos into movies is by paying more attention to your location and time of day. A nice sunset at the beach will always trump artificial studio lighting. Here in Amsterdam, we occasionally get these beautiful purple dreamlike sunsets at the end of the day during the end of the summer. Whenever this occurs, Instagram stories is full of it. Can't blame them. Uh, the rest of the year, it's usually just rain. However, this also happened once when I was on a run and I passed the Berlagebrug looking over the beautiful Amstel River. And these moments with good lighting conditions are usually only here for half an hour to an hour at most before things start getting dark. So I decided to continue to run to my house, grabbed my camera, cycled back to the bridge and got the ultimate money shot. The point I'm trying to make is that location and time of day can really improve the look of your footage and it's completely free. Good cinematographers, they even use these apps that show you the position of the sun during the day and they do this to get the perfect lighting conditions or avoid bad ones. The fourth way for turning your videos into movies is by using music and sound effects. Especially when you're new to filmmaking, it's easy to overlook the influence of sound effects. Music and sound effects are a bit more difficult to notice when you're passively watching a video. Most of us who have ever edited know how it can transform the feeling of a video. 
It has the ability to change footage from feeling like an insane documentary about the dark history of Amsterdam to B-roll from a YouTube day in a live video in Amsterdam. One of the platforms that can really help you to implement music and sound effects is audio. And they were also kind enough to be the sponsor of this video and the first sponsor of this channel. So all filmmakers and creators, we know about music licensing because we all want to make videos with good tunes and no copyright problems. And that's exactly what audio brings. They have thousands of amazing artists and tracks to choose from. And they have recently offered something new, which is to help you with your search for your perfect song, because that can take a lot of time. It's called Link Match AI. Uh, it's only available for the pro license, but how I've used it is whenever I'm editing and lacking inspiration, I go to my video inspiration page. I copy a link of one cool video and I paste it into the AI and audio shows me similar songs. So most songs in this video I've actually found because of that feature. They also have a 70% discount offer for the viewers of this channel. Go to audio.com slash Bruno K, use the coupon code Bruno70 at checkout. Big thanks to Audio for sponsoring this video. The fifth way for turning your videos into movies is by using moving time lapses. Time lapses can look great and beautiful if you have a beautiful setting to record. However, if you're just sitting in your room working on something, a static time lapse can look a bit boring. The solution would be to make your camera move slowly so it turns into a dynamic time lapse. Now, there's gear for this that you can use like a motorized slider. Although that results into great moving time lapses, such a motorized slider can be expensive, especially if you consider that you won't be using it that much. A cheap alternative to this would be to place your camera on the highest settings of your time lapse mode and zoom and move digitally in post. Doesn't, it's better, but not completely great. Another great, not that cheap alternative to this would be to use a 360 camera. I happen to have one and since the 360 camera records everything around it, you can frame your time lapse in creative ways without moving your camera. So for this shot, I placed my 360 camera on a tripod close to the ceiling of my room and I added the rotation and zoom in post. Just like the previously explained techniques, you'll only want to use a time lapse if it is motivated by the story that you're telling. Time lapses can be used to represent the passage of time. Um, create a sense of progression or urgency or transformation, but it can also create a meditative calm or chaotic atmosphere. Obviously this all depends on what you're filming and the story and what's happening in the time-lapse. If you're a fan of cinematic time-lapses, I recommend watching these movies. Fewer discretion is advised because these movies, they're not your typical narrative films. They are an experience. Some parts of this video were shot on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Uh, and I know it's a downgrade in terms of image quality compared to my Blackmagic camera, but I really enjoyed shooting on this thing and I'm planning on traveling soon to Vietnam. And I wanna challenge myself to see if I can create something cinematic on this thing. Um, I wanna create something cinematic, but also travel as light as possible. So I think it will be a fun challenge. Um, if there's any Vietnam filmmakers watching this video, comment down below. Let me know in the comments down below which technique surprised you the most or which one I should include in a next video. Thanks for watching.